May I have the roll call, please, for the town clerk? Chairman Carson? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Roberts? Councilor Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Watson? Here. Student Representative Clucci? Here. Student Representative Elia? And Manager Michael McGovern? Here. And clerk? Yeah. Present. <laughs> the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Presentations. I'm Gay Howe from Casco Bay Soccer Club. Spencer Howe and Dan Shedd and Claudia Shedd. And I'm going to turn this around so that I know you're making the presentation to the council, but I always think it's more important for the people at home to see them. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Casco Bay Soccer is providing experiences for travel soccer for 325 kids in town with a few kids from South Portland. Um, we have 23 separate teams. This is an increase of 45 kids over last year. In 1996, we made a pledge to the town of Cape Elizabeth to donate $16,000 for the construction of athletic fields. And tonight, Daniel and Spencer would like to present a check that will bring us up to $10,000 of our pledge. Oh, wow. All of this money is collected with our athletes going door to door, getting bottles and cans. So every nickel and 15 cent deposit totals the 10,000 we've already presented. Lots of bottles and cans on collection day. We'd like to thank the t citizens of the town for supporting our fundraising efforts. And we'd like to thank the council for their continued support in our endeavor to keep kids busy. Thank you very much. And I'm going to take the check on behalf of the town. And I want to thank you very much for your hard work. And now you own the field. <laughs> Keep in mind, you own the fields in Cape Elizabeth. They're yours. Thank you very much and for all your hard work. It's a little hard sometimes when you make a commitment to, after several weeks or months go by, to stay with that. So that we certainly appreciate the work that you have to do to, uh, to hold with your pledge. And we hope that there's enough fields for kids. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, reports and correspondence, please. Council. Hearing none. Oh, sorry, got to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was waving. Um, I'm reporting for um, Jack Roberts, who is uh, unable to be here this evening. He wanted me to announce that uh, there are still openings on the Conservation Commission, and they are, we are, will also be seeking applicants for all boards and commissions in the town. There will be an ad in the Courier October 7th, so we would encourage people who want to participate in the life of the town and who want to serve the town and um, learn more about the town to become more involved. They can apply uh, either on the website or by contacting the manager's office. Thank you. Any other reports correspondence? Um, at this time, I just wanted to sort of interject for a minute before we move to the next report. If the student representatives, uh, maybe this would be an appropriate time or maybe we should put it in here. If you had any questions or you had any things that came from your student body or any sort of feedback that came from just your being the, as representatives on the town council. I don't think we have any questions as of yet. Um, we're really enjoying it and we've done last year. It's been interesting. Well, that's great. That's great. I hope we can get into something that can be really you can get involved in. Town manager's report. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, in lieu of a report this evening, I just wanted to make mention uh, that today would have been David Pickering's 48th birthday, and I think everyone's aware that uh, David passed away since the last town council meeting. He was a very dedicated chief, uh, you know, a, a really good person who did so much for our community. And, uh, I think David would have been particularly proud during the memorial services held both in uh, Wiscasset as well as here in Cape Elizabeth 
of uh, the police officers who participated in it, and particularly proud of his family members, uh, his three daughters, and in the way they carried themselves uh, through a very difficult time. And I uh, know that everyone in the community uh, really feels and uh, supports David's family during this difficult time. Uh, again, uh, you know, this would have been David's birthday, and uh, it, uh, I'm very unfortunate that he didn't make it, but the life that he did lead was, was one of much service, and one that he enjoyed as much as he could to the very end. So, thank you. Thank you. Anything else from the manager? No? Are there, is there any items um, that are not on the agenda for citizens' discussion? Hearing none, I will move on to the minutes of the September 11th meeting. Uh, are there any um, some discussion? Is there a motion to uh, approve them? And then we can discuss that if there's something else. Any motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Moved and second. Is there any discussion on this? Any errors, changes, omissions? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairman, um, uh, uh, under reports and correspondence, uh, last time I had uh, announced that uh, three members of the Cape Elizabeth uh, field hockey team have been invited to the National Field Hockey Festival in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that the notes did not include the fact that uh, they need donations to go. It costs $1,500 for each of them. And if mm -hmm. any of the members of the community uh, would like to donate to send these Cape Elizabeth girls to the National uh, Field Hockey Festival in Florida, I know they certainly would welcome any donations, and they could be made through the town manager or to me. And uh, I, I think that should be included in the uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Anything else with the changes? Remove the question. We approve the minutes, please. Do you have any changes? No. No. Thank you very much. Nobody is opposed. It carries. We certainly have approved our minutes. Um, <clears throat> what is this? This is the last minutes. Item number 39. Consideration of confirming the polling hours and other details of the upcoming November election. Deborah Lane, please. Town Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chairman. It would be in order this evening for the Council to set the opening polling hours uh, for 7 a.m. And if I just may take a moment just to go through a few details for the election. It has been scheduled for Tuesday, November 7th. Polling places in Cape Elizabeth is at the Cape Elizabeth High School Gymnasium, whether you are in District 20, Legislative District 24 or Legislative District 25. Both districts are set up at the high school. If you need to register to vote, if you're new to the community, or if you have moved within Cape Elizabeth and have an address change or a name change, you may do so at the polls. However, we encourage you to come to Town Hall and do that prior to um, Election Day. We anticipate many lines on Election Day, and so as much of that detail that you can get done before, we really would appreciate it. So you can come to Town Hall or call me. We will send you um, a change, um, a card change. Oh, right. Also, anyone that the town changed your address in um, preparation for the E911, um, we will be doing those changes um, to the voter list. You will not have to come to town hall to do that, nor will you have to wait in line at the deputy registrar's on election day. We will take care of that, that detail. Um, if you will be out of the community that day, um, or if you simply to wish to wish to cast an absentee ballot, you no longer have to have cause to do so. I anticipate that the absentee ballots will be available here at Town Hall by the end of this week. Um, so anyone wishing to cast an absentee ballot may also come to Town Hall or call us, and we can do that by mail. Um, any other questions about the election? Anyone, please give us a call. People have already. There's been a lot of interest. Um, so we are, we are here to help. Madam Chairman, I'd like to ask the clerk a question. Uh, these uh, ballots that are mailed out for absentee ballots, they have to be notarized? They do not if they are requested by the voter or an immediate family member of the voter and they go directly to the voter and come back. Mm -hmm. Only the time that a third person is involved, a neighbor or what have you, would um, a notary or two other witnesses be required? Thank you. So the laws have been simplified, you know, to assist folks. Um, I might add one other thing that I'm working very carefully with the school department and the police department for parking issues. We do anticipate traffic issues and parking issues at the high school on election day. 
Um, please bear with us. We are doing our best. Um, also, I have hired extra staff within the building to assist folks in the voting process. But again, I anticipate that some 5,000 ballots will be cast in that one polling place on that day, so there will be some delays. So we will do our best to get folks through. And again, if you feel you can't take the time, don't have it that day, please cast an absentee ballot. That is an option for you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, as usual, it will run very smoothly. I know it will. Yes, Councilor uh, no. Fritz. I just wanted to add, one of the things about registering for the first time to vote, don't people need to bring some proof of They have to address? show proof of identity, such as a driver's license or a passport or state of Maine ID or what have you, and proof of residency. So you have to bring something with your CAPE address. So preferably you will have your driver's license with your CAPE address, and that, that will take care of both. But yes, thank you, you do. Or an envelope addressed to them at that address. You can have mail, um, utilities. You don't have it, yeah. yeah. Okay, Chairman, Councilor Barry. I move that the polls uh, be open at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning and that they stay open until 8 o'clock at night on the 7th of November, the year 2000. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None. Motion passes. Item number 40. Consideration of a proposed 35-foot easement from the town to Leslie T. and Maureen A. Corey, trustees of the Keener Realty Trust, which permit the use of the easement area to allow access and egress to the rear of 312 Ocean House Road. Manager McGovern, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. 312 Ocean House Road is the, the old farmhouse style building uh, between the service station in back of the council chamber and the key bank building. Uh, that, they have a parking lot in back of the building, which is very good and appropriate for our town center zone. Uh, they used to have parking in the front of the building. There still are a few couple of cars parked occasionally in the front. Uh, they traditionally have used some of the area alongside the service station lot in order to access the back. We, when the most recent owner bought the property, we informed them that there was, in, in fact, no right to do that, uh, that it just was something that had started for a year or so before that. Uh, they came back to us recently asking if we would grant them an easement. To that, it was negotiated uh, with them uh, through their attorney. Uh, the compensation to the town for granting the easement is $10,000. Uh, which under town council policy, if approved, would go into the land acquisition fund. Uh, we still do share the right of uh, passage over this area. It's, it's held in common. So the, the town is, is giving them the perpetual right to pass over it, but we are not losing the right to pass over it as well. And so I would encourage the town council to consider approval of this uh, easement and authorize me to sign it on behalf of the town. Councilor McGinty. Um, Mr. Manager, I know you thought of this. If we decide to develop that piece of property in any way, that we make it a park, we put up a building or whatever, would that have any impact on us being able to put, I'm thinking of um, uh, setbacks and things of that nature, could that have an impact on what we might want to do? It, it actually is, is within most of the area that we couldn't use because of setback anyway uh, along the property line. So it, it, it is beneficial and that's one reason we've retained it in common to the right to pass there because it, depending on what we did on the property, we still would have the right to put a driveway or, or other passageway over this area. Thank you. Any more discussion? Councilor Fritz. And this does not obligate us to pave a driveway or do anything, but it allows them to pave the driveway, if I'm reading this correctly? Yeah, they need to review it with us, but yes, it, it does give the right for some, some minimal improvements. It's, I, I think it's a it's you know good relationship and it's very in, very much in keeping with uh, the town center zoning and encouraging the parking in the rear. And I think it's you know it's an important accommodation of this old almost historic farmhouse uh, built by William D. Murray back around the turn of the century. Okay. Do you have a question here? Have a, have a motion. Um, well, Councilor Barry. I move that the. Uh, town manager be authorized to uh, execute on behalf of the town the quick claim deed presented in our packet that uh, would grant the town an easement in common with the uh, grantees of the easement. Okay. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed, none. Thank you, the motion carries. This is, item, this is for you, right? Uh, item number 41, consideration of approval of the mail ballot for the Maine Municipal Association, which the Councillor McGovern is going to explain to the public. Yes, as town manager, I'd be happy to do that. Right. Uh, oh, Councillor McGovern, that's true. <laughs> town manager McGovern. This is this the is quick the, inflection. <laughs> this is the annual election of offices for the Maine Municipal Association. The town of Cape Elizabeth is entitled to one vote, and I would recommend that uh, you authorize the town clerk to cast the ballot on behalf of the town council with, with the recommended nominating committee slate. So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded. M might add, just for the public's knowledge, that there are, there are no contested races in this. Right. That is true. Has, has anyone else expressed uh, interest in any of the offices? As a write-in candidate? Yeah, the Maine Municipal Association has a nominating committee process, right. and candidates do have time to file an objection and then get on the ballot as a, as a candidate who also requested to be listed. Right. Uh, there is no one doing an active write-in candidate candidacy that the town has been notified uh, yes. of, if you pardon that fractured sentence. <laughs> Ending in a dangling participle? Preposition, ending in the preposition. Council Watson. Madam Chair, I just would like to add that as Cape Elizabeth's representative to the Maine Municipal Association, I know many of these people that are, are being nominated, and uh, this is a very good slate of individuals uh, that have stepped forward to serve in, in these various capacities. So I would strongly urge people to support um, the nominations of the people as indicated by MMA. Well, Michael, we need voting delegates for two. <coughs> that on there too? The next page, voting delegates. Here. Who's going? Any councilors going, Deborah? Well, any councilors? We have MMA. Uh, Jack and Councilor McGinty. Uh, Jack and Councilor McGinty. So how many voting delegates do we have? We have, we have one plus an alternate. Oh, what? Why don't we make it John and you? Okay. Okay. Do you hear that, John McGinty? Yes, that's fine. You're the voting delegate? That's fine with me. Okay. <laughs> and the town clerk is the alternate. All right, that, can we amend that on to, who made the motion? Councilor Fritz. Councilor Fritz. I'll second it. It's already been moved and seconded. We're Sorry. just gonna add on the delegates that we forgot to put on the first time. All right, all those in favor? Motion carries. Item number 42, consideration of a request to authorize the issuance of a request for proposals for landscape improvements to Portland Headlight. Looking very excited, I will ask you again Mr. Manager. I don't know who's looking very excited, but anyway. Well, I just think it's exciting that we might do some improvements down there. Yeah, it's, this is a request for permission to an issue an RFP. The, it's proposed that all of the work would actually be paid for by the museum in Portland Headlight 501C3 because all of this is directly related to the lighthouse properties. You see the photo on the front. Uh, there's an area that used to be all grass. It's now all dirt. Um, <laughs> the whole passageways on the lighthouse property itself need some attention as to what the layout should be. And you might ask, you know, why doesn't the town just go in and fix it? The, the reason is, is because if we begin to change paths and other issues, we need to receive site plan approval by the planning board, plus the fact it's an historic property. We want to make sure it's done correctly. In addition, uh, when this first went as a suggestion of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, it went with the suggestion that we fix the path that where, is, where the Battery Blair Interpretive Center is. Mm -hmm. uh, Battery Blair is as you, you go down over the hill toward the lighthouse, it's directly across from between the parking lot and the lighthouse. If you've looked at that, there's a, there's a pathway that comes down from that to the crosswalk that's on page three there. That is all eroded. Uh, it's not handicap accessible, all sorts of issues. We then have everyone gets to that point and they tend to walk out into the middle of the roadway. I have some photos of that. I didn't include it here. And they, they walk all through the roadway. What, what we're thinking of doing is extending the, the split rail fence up and then improving a pathway all along what would be the right side of the road to the lighthouse and then extending over onto the side there to keep it much safer and also to make it much more handicap accessible. That's what went to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. If you notice, th there's something else in this request for proposals and that was a recommendation that came from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, is that we also look at better connecting the cliff walk to the lighthouse property. It does connect up 
as you're heading back out further up at the base of the hill. But then there's an area right along the cliff there where you have an old stairway that's got a fence sort of half on one side of the stairway, half on the other. It's, it's gravel, much as you see on the other side. And it's the, the, the sense is to enhance that entire area uh, with perhaps appropriate landscaping with appropriate paths to try to channel the, the traffic down there quite a bit. Uh, what all this would cost, I don't know because we haven't had the plans done yet, but it, it is recommended, uh, as you can see reading through this, that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission be the group that oversees the day-to-day -day process, be the advisory committee, and then any final plans as well would come to the town council. And you, you probably noted that there's uh, inclusions here for meetings uh, with the planning board as well, uh, with the town council, as well as with the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Thank you. What we're looking for from the council is to authorize the manager to issue the RFP. Councilor Fritz. Um, I'm just wondering whether this um, includes the landscaping in the plan of the center island, you know, choosing the plants for there and that, because that area has gotten rather. Actually, that area has been fixed up a lot in the last two weeks and is in, is in really good shape. They, uh, weeded it all, they put bark mulch on all of it, uh, and it's, it's looking much better. It was cleaned out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Who did that, Mike? Uh, public Works did. Oh, you did? Okay. It's not specifically in there, but mm -hmm. it's not to say that it might not come out as part of the overall plan, but, but that was just redesigned two years ago mm -hmm. using a master gardener with volunteer services from Cape Elizabeth Garden Club. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I, I think it's important to get um, professional assistance on this because I think choosing the, the proper plants as well and the design of the walkway um, is, is a good idea from a maintenance standpoint and an appearance standpoint. So I think it's a good idea and I like that you're proposing that it come out of the Fort Williams <laughs> Museum Fund and not the taxes. That's true. Well, that's what that money's for, yeah. money earned in the store. Is there a motion? Not yet. No. Need a motion? I move, yeah. I move that we authorize the issuance of a request for proposal for landscape improvements to the Portland headlight area. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? None? Thank you. That carries. Um, at this point in the meeting, the town council is going to recess for a workshop. The workshop discussion item is to review the annual financial statements and also we have a request um, in our packets for this will, we will also be discussing a proposed program for compost handling in the town of Cape Elizabeth. It is easier to discuss these items with a lot of questions and answers in a workshop form so we will be recessing for that. When we come back and I don't know I, I think it might be within a half an hour. When we come back, we have one final item, and that is to consider a request to enter into an executive session for the discussion only of land acquisition and disposition issues. So, um, we, you know, you, you may s stay by your TVs and watch us, but we will be in another room having a workshop discussion, and then when we come back, we will simply be uh, voting to go into executive session. So, hearing that, so we're uh, planning to televise the motion to win the executive session. We, we're not. No. Would it be appropriate to make that motion now, after the, uh, so that the folks at home will know? It, what motion? Which uh, motion? The, the, uh, item 40 to, uh, to uh, enter an executive yes. session after the workshop. Yes, it would be. And, and I, I so move that uh, the council enter executive session after the workshop for the discussion of land acquisition and disposition, disposition issues. Thank you. Second. Uh, Point of information. Yes. Um, the citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda is usually the last thing we do. It um, might be appropriate for us to just ask that question now before we it, it would be a good time to do that. Our Greg auditor Greg has his own Greg special Greg. time coming up. So, <laughs> um, Are there any issues, uh, items not on the agenda for discussion by the public? Hearing none, we will move on. We have your motion and we have, we need a second. I, I, I second it. She second. Ruth second. And also for information, I think you said it, but just to clarify that we will not be taking any further votes. This we week. will not be taking any further votes or, uh, or action. Other than to adjourn. 
other than to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Definitely doing that. Thank you very much. Oh, we got a vote on this. Vote. Yeah, All those in favor? Oppose none. Thank you very much, and a good evening to everybody. Um, and I appreciate, again, your watching. This was a very short meeting, but we now will have a financial discussion, which may not be quite as short as the first part of the meeting. And you have your... Uh,